Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie is a Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and for this stream, we're going to be ending off with a match between Dynthrind and Capricious on Avalanche. Bit of a smaller map. I mean, it's basically just center path with the net south occasionally coming up, and the north being a bit of a sneaky path. So I'm guessing, let's see. Oh, Amphib right off the bat. And Capricious. I just realized! Hokumoko wasn't going for Amphib either of those games. Has Hokumoko stopped playing Amphib as a main factory? That was Hokumoko's thing for the longest time, but I guess Hokumoko's gone for shields now. Interesting. Anyway, Dynthrind picking up Hokumoko's mantle, going for the ducks, going for the Amphib factory, while Capricious going for Clokibot factory, so right now I'd say that Dynthrind has a bit of an advantage. Like, right at the start of the game, Amphib has a bit of an easier time because Ducks one-shot Glaives. Like, just one-shot Glaives compared to, like, they deal 230 damage. So, Glaives die in one hit, Bandits don't. Which is one of the reasons for a while that Cloakie wasn't played, but now I guess it is. Anyhow, Capricious is going to be probably building up just enough Glaives that, I mean, after one Glaive dies, the second Glaive gets rid of the Duck. Which isn't all that cost efficient, come to think of it, because ducks are only slightly more expensive. Yeah, they cost 80 metal compared to 65. So this is going to be a pretty op pretty good opening for Dying Friend. Capricious might want to build up something like Rocco's or something very rapidly. But it looks like, no, they're going just straight for Glaives. Just sacrificing Glaives. Just not even worrying about... Why are you not hitting the... There was a free time there. You could have gone for that duck. But no, it looks like it's just going to be static defenses. No Rocco's Conjurer coming instead. A lot of Glaives. And nothing coming out for Dynefriend. Dynefriend just has the pressure. So at this point, Dynefriend's pressure not really translating into a massive economic advantage. A, sli a slight economic advantage. Like two metal per second. But not huge. And also Dynefriend... Still not building a lot of energy. Dynafriend seems to build only enough energy to get deal with the metal they have. That's something I noticed in the last game as well. And Dynafriend asking for more Glaive. They're not going to get it! Scythe coming out, actually. One Glaive just, I guess, to deflect suspicion. But no, after that, Scythe. Once it actually gets the money to build it. But yes, Scythe. That's a good idea. And boys coming out to not really deal with it, but I guess just to assault. I mean, boys would deal with warriors. Warriors would deal with ducks if you have enough of them. I mean, they deal with ducks okay. It's more like small numbers of warriors versus small numbers of ducks, the warriors win. Large numbers of ducks versus a smaller number of warriors, the ducks usually win. Large numbers of both warriors win. And at this point, I think it would actually be in the favor of ducks. Just barely. But Capricious is not going for warriors, they're going for scythes, so this is really a matter of trying to get inside Dynthrin's head. Oh, no, never mind, never mind. There are warriors coming up, so Dynthrin made a good call. Boy is exactly right. Granted, that won't be for a little while, but not that long, only about 20 seconds. So one scythe coming down to clear up the south side of the map. North side of the map, or center of the map, I should say. The center lane is actually taking a lot of damage. Capricious with that lightning gun. Very powerful lightning gun commander there. Frighteningly powerful lightning gun commander. Dynefront hasn't even upgraded their commander. Capricious basically single-handedly with their commander taking that center lane. Getting rid of all the ducks. And Scythe coming in to get rid of the ducks at the south side. Nicely done, Capricious. Broke out of that pressure. Very well done. So the ducks... They're gone now, but the warriors are here, I guess, just in case. But at the same time, Dynefriend called that. They have boys. So at this point, Capricious is either going to want to build more Glaives, or possibly switch to Rocco and just go for Skirmisher Wars. Given the amount of defenders, I think that Capricious might just be trying to go for a Skirmisher versus Static Defense Wars, or doesn't even realize there's no... I, they probably don't realize there's boys. They probably expect more ducks, which would be a reasonable expectation, but Dynefriend's already basically countered the counter. So at this point, it's Capricious, however, I mean, Dynefriend didn't expect that. And Dynefriend is going for more ducks, either possibly either search out for more of these sides, or maybe just to deal more damage. I mean, the boys aren't super damaging, but really, these, these warriors won't do much. Oh, but then again, there's a distraction! Nice distraction there! That's 
not going to be that profitable. Boys, slow things down. That's clever move, but unfortunately, slow kind of stuffs that. Yeah, that didn't really totally work. Anyway, Capricious staking on the north side, making sure that's there. Staking on the south side as well. Capricious pretty much trying to make sure that Dynefront can't get around without knowing, without being revealed. That's the important thing. However, Capricious is not building up the south side of the map, despite the fact that they know what might happen. Which kind of makes sense. It should be pointed out. Bots can actually go from the center to the south, from the center, in the middle of the center. In the center of the center, they can go to the center of the south. Or southwest. Whatever. There, this cliff here is bot pathable. At least partially. So Capricious right now, just trying to set up that center. I still think... Oh, there we go. About to say, I still think they should be setting up this southwest. And they are. So that's good. And the scythe coming into the northwest to help get rid of Dynefriend's base. Capricious dealing quite a bit of damage here. Dynefriend actually falling back economically pretty strongly. And that also keeps the ducks back, which is good because all the warriors died. I think... Yep, they're all dead. So yeah, the warriors are all dead, which means there's nothing to really counter the ducks. The rockers kind of can. The scythe can. Sort of. In small numbers. I mean, five ducks, no. The scythe will die. That's one volley and is dead. But, against smaller numbers of ducks, it does work. That scythe, however, kind of doesn't really have anywhere else to go until... Oh, wait a sec. Ooh, this conch is so vulnerable. Granted, there's another conch right there, so it's not that worth it. I mean, right now, the pressure is basically just flipped around. Capricious is expanding. They have basically the entire south side of the map. The center lane is contested, as it normally is. And the north side has been taken a bit by Dynefriend. And Dynefriend... Losing the boy? That boy is not going to die. Nowhere near. The slowing effect is being under... Capricious is really underestimating the slowing effect. Like... That is something to really think about. Like, it's always worth worrying about. Because I think that Capricious was thinking, Oh, I'll just chop up that boy. It'll just cut enough times. I mean, it's, I think, 200 damage a sh Yes, 200 damage a swing. Against the boy, that would actually be pretty good. That'd be 15 swing. Oh, no, sorry, 7 swings. Yeah, 7 swings and they're down. Problem, of course, is that it takes longer and longer and longer to do any given swing because of the slowing effect. So that's the problem. Ooh, nice Gauss turret. I've been seeing a lot more of those recently. I like that. It's good to see that. I mean, there are so many turrets in this game. Possibly too many. But when people are using them, I think that there's maybe enough. Not too many. It helps convince me that the number of turrets is justified. It's still a lot of turrets, though. But, yeah. They have their uses. And a heavy tank factory coming out in the center of the map. That's... That makes sense. I mean, this is a relatively small map. It doesn't really matter where you build a heavy tank factory. But... He Building it closer to the opponent? Not a bad idea. Well, okay, so it's kind of a risky idea. But it's not a terrible idea, especially if they're going for some of the slower things. Like everything, because it's the heavy tank factory and everything is slow. They're probably not going for panthers. What the? Right as I say that! Then why'd you go for a proxy heavy tank factory on an 8x8 map? That doesn't make so much sense to me. That's a really risky move then. Like, if that was Reapers? Okay, sure. Or Banishers? Yeah, fine. Panthers? Panthers are faster than everything you have on the field right now. 102 Elmo. You don't have any Glaives on the field, so yeah, everything else is slower. Quite a bit slower, in fact. The boys are probably the... No, not even closest. They're the slowest. Ducks are closest, but yeah, Panthers are the fastest by far. Probably just because the commander was there. I mean, there's not a whole lot of construction in the main base. There's a Conjurer... There's a caretaker. I guess that would have... I mean, that would have taken like 40 seconds to build. Rather than here, which it took like 20. So there is that. But I think it was really just an accident of where the commander was. And a grizzly going to be coming up for dying friend, which... Hmm. Kind of a last-ditch effort to just push through the center. Capricious has taken the southwest pretty convincingly. Although, if the grizzly goes through the southwest, it's a bit of a waste... So that would be a bad idea. If the duck goes to the southwest, it'll maybe talk to the warrior. Actually, you know what? I think the warrior would die. And the boy's coming down here. You know, the, the ducks could actually go down to the southwest, deal with the southwest if Dynefriend knows. Dynefriend knows. Yeah, they, they see it. They know. And the grizzly goes down the center. That keeps Capricious occupied. 
So yeah, that could work. That could give Dime Friend some way of getting back in the game. But yeah, Capricious with these Panthers, we'll see what they do with it. I don't know. I mean, that'll be a bit of a problem for the Grizzly. Not much, but a bit of a problem. Hmm. The Gausters probably be a bigger problem. Those things are, well, it's 200 damage, but I'm pretty sure with large units, they hit multiple times. So you'd actually see a lot more damage being dealt. No, just 200. Maybe it has to get closer. Hmm. Well, Panther's coming in at any rate, and that is going to be the problem. For the Panthers, apparently, because they actually take a while to stun out the Grizzly. Not that long, though. You know what? I can kind of see the justification for the Panthers. Still don't totally see the proxy thing. I'm pretty sure that was just an accident of the commander being close. Like, commander being on the front lines, and that's where all the build power was. But, hey, it's worked out, I guess. And yeah, the duck's going down too, thanks to the panther death having the whole tick effect. Yeah, that pretty much stopped Dimefrin. Well, not really. Never mind. That stopped Dimefrin's center advance, but the southwest is totally gone. They went for the right move in the southwest. Unfortunately, what I mentioned before about the energy is relevant right now. Dimefrin accessing quite a bit of metal because of that energy. Capricious, on the other hand, could actually just reclaim a bunch of stuff once they retake things. And now this makes more sense for the proxy. With the Reaper being built up, that, that seems that's more sensible. But yeah, the reclaim, once that's being set up and all that, I mean, Capricious can easily take advantage of it. Dimefrin needs to build a lot more power plants. Dimefrin has managed to do a lot of damage, you know, getting rid of Capricious' static economy. However, that just makes them even, and Capricious could reclaim. Once this Grizzly goes down, we're going to see a lot of reclaim, if not before then. Possibly, probably before then, actually. I mean, there's a lot of stuff being set up. Capricious has a lot of defenses being set up, so... Might take a little while, but yes, if that Grizzly goes down, we're going to see a lot of reclaim, and even possibly before then. Actually, definitely before then, this caretaker is going to be building up some stuff. It's too far away to help out the factory. So, that's reclaiming. Dimefront's still behind economically, despite the harassment. The harassment really was just an equalizing force. Dimefront has taken the Northeast, and the Grizzly is doing some damage. Actually, one more shot and down with his commander, and that is going to be right now! Okay, goodbye, commander. So much for that, I guess. Anyway, the commander down, that's Capricious's... Actually, a lot of his economy... Wow, a, most of their economy. Capricious is actually falling behind, except for the reclaim. That was a lot of their build power, too. Counterattack is coming in from Capricious, and if Dimefront's commander goes down, then all the benefit of that attack is lost. And Dimefront's commander escaping with, like, 100 health? Yeah, that was close. But hey, they escaped. Still... Capricious has, Capricious has the center. Capricious has all this artillery to try to push through. Which is not a terrible idea against Grizzly. And the Reaper as well, which, I mean, basically tanks the Grizzly. Granted, Reapers are kind of expensive, and Capricious' economy hasn't been too healthy recently. They did lose the entire Southwest. They are trying to retake it. There are warriors going past the Ducks. I'm guessing Capricious has no... No, Capricious has no... No radar at all? Nope, no radar at all. Okay. So yeah, Capricious has no radar. They're, re they're relying entirely on raw sight. Which is a bit weird, but at any rate... Ooh, the ducks! Oh, they were going up to probably to try to help. Then found the warriors. That's not a bad stakeout position, given that Capricious has no radar. I mean, if Capricious had radar, it'd be different, but Capricious has no radar, so hey. Anyway, it looks like Capricious still holding the center pretty strong. And now the reclaim's open, actually. Yeah, there's a Conjurer right here. The Commander Wreck is right next to there. I mean, this reclaim's kind of a no-brainer. I'm surprised there aren't reclaiming. Really, Capricious can take full advantage of reclaim. They need to reclaim. That's going to keep them in the game right now. Like, Dimefriend... They're building up a lot of heavy forces, and the Grizzly didn't die. It's getting repaired, too. So, that's 4,000 metal on the board that's not really going away. That's a lot of firepower, and Capricious hasn't done anything about it. And now losing more warriors, so those ducks are going to have free reign. That's... This is getting harder and harder for Capricious. With some reclaim, that would help, and Scuttle being built up as well to help get rid of the Grizzly. Makes sense. But yeah, I'm going to harp on about that reclaim. 
that reclaim's super important. Like, really, really needed. And Capricious now gonna get radar, finally gonna get radar, over on the north side of the map. We'll see that Dime Friend has taken the north lane. I mean, that's just what's happened. And Dime Friend, double Grizzly down here. One of the Scuttles is done. The second Scuttle... It's gonna be a while. Why the Scuttle is not going to attack the Grizzly just to finish it off? No, get rid of one of them? I don't know. Capricious might be waiting for both Scuttles just to get rid of both. I don't think that's gonna work, though. That doesn't look like... No, that, that does not look viable. I mean... How long is that Scuttle gonna take? 9 seconds? 18 seconds? Who knows? It's going everywhere! Capricious really needs more metal! Fire Reclaim! Anyway, one of the Scuttles is going for it. The second Scuttle is just now done. Let's see, more hammers being built up. Dime Friend is having a very difficult time. Actually, no. Not difficult time, what am I saying? Dime Friend? Okay, they're having a bit of a difficult time. Now they're having a difficult time! Now with that Scuttle going off, and the second Scuttle following very, very closely behind. Okay, I'm exaggerating. It's actually rather far behind. But it's following, kind of. Certainly threatening that Grizzly, so Dimefriend back in a pressured position. The Southwest finally being built up for Dimefriend, though. That's a big thing. Dimefriend takes that. They're going to have an economic advantage. They will be able to even out after a few minutes. Capricious' army is not all that strong. It's strong enough... And finally, reclaims happening. Finally, the commander wreck is being reclaimed. And a caretaker being built up to help out with that reclaim, which is a good idea. I mean, it's a risky idea, but when you know you have an area for a while, caretaker's not a... And also, you have enough build power that it takes less than a minute. In this case, like 10 seconds. That's fine. If it takes a whole minute to do that, that's generally less wise. It can work. But you are spending another minute without that extra metal. At any rate, Capricious... Still up thanks to that reclaim. I mean, there's a lot of reclaim that Capricious has to work with. That Scuttle take it? No, that Scuttle didn't take anything particularly meaningful. The Grizzly's fine. No additional Scuttles are being constructed at the moment. Firewalker was being built, but it's cancelled. No, sorry, that's not for... That's for Dimefriend. Dimefriend's Firewalker is not cancelled. This... Why is there question marks? I thought the bug was fixed. Whatever. More, all we're seeing is Zeus and Glaive, and hey, Glaive versus Boy. The boys are going to have a hard time. The ducks actually might still. There's enough Glaives, I think. Maybe not. No, not if they're fighting with the boys. No, there aren't enough Glaives. The boys are actually going to survive. Maybe one more will die? Maybe? Nope. Oh, yes, there is the last... Well, second to last one goes. There's still one left. But yeah, Dime Friend, I think, might be able to retake this. They got the south. They still have the grizzly. The ducks never got taken care of. The warriors never tried to screen the area. I'm surprised at that, actually. But yeah, there was no radar. There is now. There's one right here. But there wasn't for a while. So the ducks were basically just allowed to sit there. They just staked out the entire area until Dimefriend finally recaptured it. Capricious never rebuilt there. Capricious never even really made a huge effort to rebuild there, which is surprising, because that was Capricious' entire advantage. That was the reason Capricious had as much of the game as they did. Now, Dying Friend still has to push through this. It's not done yet. Don't mistake it for that. It's not done yet. Capricious, however, is very surrounded. If this north side goes, that'll help. And it looks like the Zeus are being set up to deal with the north side. So at least that'll remove a lane that Capricious could... Or sorry, that Dying Friend could run through. But Dying Friend's center attack? That's the real... Well, not the real threat. The real threat's actually the southwest. The southwest is totally open. Dimefriend has all that metal on top of the reclaim that they're gathering. Capricious has some reclaim, but they've used most of it. They don't have a whole lot of static economy to work with. The hammers are doing a decent job, but they're going to be out artillery by the Firewalker. And the Zeus coming into the north side. Bit of a last-ditch effort from Capricious, but it might just work. I feel like Capricious losing their commander was a really big blow. Not just for their economy, mainly for the build power. I mean, they've built this one caretaker over here, but that was about it. They've really built nothing over to the front lines. Everything since then has... Actually, has there been anything since then? Maybe a few defenses, but not much. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of build power. And that lack of build power seems to have really warped their strategy once they lost their commander. The north side, however, is going down, but Dimefriend just peppering that center. Keeping the pressure on the center. 
really, as far as I can tell, keeping the pressure on the center so that the southwest has an easier time of getting in. Because Capricious is entirely focused on the center. I mean, there's a pillager set up that'll maybe push things back. But really, Diamond Friend could counterattack and deal a fair amount of damage. There's one defender. Yeah, that's it. That Colicubot factory has one defender behind it. The rest of the stuff could be attacked from behind. There's nothing really dealing with that. There's a Lotus, there's a few defenders, but line of sight is a thing. So yeah, I feel like Dianfrun's probably distracting with the center. Maybe trying to push with the center as well, but it feels like a large part of it is distraction. And the Panthers not quite coming in enough to deal with the Firewalker. Close! Oh, never mind! They've got it, I think. No, they let it go! That's not what they wanted to do. Looks like... What are they trying to do here? Well, not much in practice. That Caretaker was not being used. Dying wasn't building any Jump Out Factory units. And the Firewalker survived. Not by much, though, but still survived. You know what surprises me? No snipers. When you have all these giant units, you have the Grizzly, you have the Firewalker, you have Jacks coming built. Like, why no snipers? I find that very curious. Now, anyway, the north side has been taken by Capricious, so there's a bit more economy there. A bit less of a surround. Capricious has kind of evened things out a bit. And the Panthers actually managing to get in. Getting rid of that Firewalker. Not getting rid of the Commander, though. That's still important right now. 23 metal. Diamond not using it as a major frontline constructor in the same way Capricious was. So it's not as big of a deal. But still, it's a thing. Now that being said, Dimefriend looks like they are going to be able to just... They aren't going to be able to just simply attack. And actually an attack being attempted over to the southwest, and that's not working. Zeus is having a bit of a hard time dealing with this, but a good couple shots, that'll stun at a boy. Not for long, mind you. But it allows the slow to go away, kind of, and then that helps just generally for the bots. Well, for the Zeus, I mean. But still, two Grizzlies coming in here. Not a whole lot being built up by Capricious' factories. Nothing actually being built up by these frontal factories. Everything's being built up in the back, and Capricious is getting close to accessing. This would be a great time for a scuttle. I mean, it'd be 30 seconds, though. Actually, it'd be a bad time for a scuttle. And Dimefren takes it, manages to break that center. I mean, Capricious... Just, the center wasn't ever that strong. Capricious basically had the economy going and was setting up a relatively strong center, and then they lost their economy. Their main southwest economic base was lost. And then after that, it was just done. I mean, it wasn't totally done. Capricious had a chance to retake the area, go through, get rid of the ducks. But having not done that, they didn't really hold their advantage. And Dimefriend managed to take it back. Like, if you look at total metal used, Dimefriend actually was behind. And metal excess. Dimefriend accessed a lot more, too. Okay, Dimefriend had produced quite a lot, but had accessed quite a lot because of lack of energy. Which we've seen a few times from Dimefriend. But still, yeah, unit value just... Capricious... Ha oh, really? Had a stronger army. Hmm. That must have been before the Grizzlies. Although, no, one of those was at least a Grizzly. But yeah, it looks like that was Dimefriend's entire army was Grizzlies. And Capricious basically just lost... I think this is when they lost their... Not warriors, but... Hmm. Possibly the Panthers or the Reapers. But yeah, Capricious did throw away a lot of units after a while. Like, there was this big spike right here. And overall, we can see that Capricious lost far more units than Dimefriend. So yeah, Dimefriend going entirely for the heavy... The heavy units, and that did the trick. Oh, interesting. Looking at the graph, yeah, it looks like Capricious' economy wasn't actually that much better than Dimefriend for a lot of the game. It's about a quarter of the game where they were even, then a quarter of the game where Capricious was ahead, then another quarter of the game when they were even, and then another quarter of the game where Dimefriend was ahead. And it all kind of evened out. Yeah, and metal production is like, there was a, you can kind of see a curve up for Capricious, and then it just keeps going up. About the same rate as Dimefriend. Interesting. Well, anyway, that is going to be it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and have a good night, everyone.